Hello everyone, it's Andrew Ikemipose and you are still watching the best course about the best multiplayer in GTA 5, Rage MP. So it's been a while since last lessons, uh, uh, it was more than a month, but I hope that uh, now we will try to upload at least one two videos per week and uh, it will be fine. So yeah, sorry for my uh, like bad time, I hope everything will be great. So the topic of our lesson today is Entity Framework Core and databases and uh, other stuff with settings. So we already uh, know how to use basic stuff of RageMP and now we just need to store this data somewhere and to use it somehow. I mean, like get it from database, store it in the in database and other stuff. I don't really like direct queries uh, with, for example, MySQL or PostgreSQL. So that's why we are using ORM, object, uh, object something, something. Uh, not so important, by the way. So, to know something about Entity Framework, I really suggest you to try to read EntityFrameworkTutorial.net and Metanit.com. Uh, this, uh, this website is on Russian, but uh, I mean, you can translate it every, every time in any browser. So yeah, these two links are really useful. Also, we will use uh, like the chain of Entity Framework Core plus PostgreSQL. So you could watch any guide in YouTube how to install PostgreSQL and pgAdmin to administrate this database. So I already created database course DB and uh, I will use it for our lessons. Okay, let's begin. We are going to our project and here we need to um, import some packages. First of all, we need to import Newtonsoft JSON version 13.01. Mm -hmm. Next, we need to install npg SQL, anti framework core, PostgreSQL. And here we need to change to choose the version 507. Also, we will need entity framework core tools. And we need to choose the version 503. Yes, we will use uh, specific versions just because of. Uh, Rage MP. It's uh, it will not work with uh, like up to date versions. That's why we need to use like a little bit older. But no worries. I hope it will be fine. So next, let's connect to our database with Rider. If you are using Visual Studio, you could just use uh, PG Admin, but I prefer to use Rider stuff. So we are going to databases section, creating new database, choosing data source and uh, PostgreSQL right here. Here we need to provide credentials to log in in our database. So I have course admin login and admin course password. Also the database is course db. Let's try to test the connection. Yep, it succeeded. Okay, apply. Okay. Okay, now we can see everything. So next, we are going to server side settings, choosing edit edit server side CS approach. If you're in Visual Studio, just double click on server side. Here we need to pass past uh, this line, copy local files assemblies and set it to true. It will copy all the DLLs that we are using in our project in uh, the build folder. So it's very useful. I don't know why we didn't uh, made it, didn't make it before, but yeah, please set it. Also, I will uh, type this comment in the, into the description. Okay, so now is everything setting up. We have database, we have uh, entity framework in our hmm, project. Let's create a uh, few directories just to make our life a little bit easier. First of all, we need uh, models directory. Next, we need models, model config configurations folder. And we need class corset, not corset, but <laughs> course context. Okay, let's begin from the course context. So what is context? Context, it's like uh, almost the repo repository pattern file. Uh, with this file, we will connect to our database and retrieve the information that also pass the information. So it will be the main class of our uh, database connection. So we need to inherit it from DB context. Here, we need to overwrite two methods. So we are using protected override on configuring 
and also protected override on model creating. Let's start from on configuring. So on configuring uh, method is called before the configuration of database context. So here we need to like set up the connection. So what we need to do, uh, we will declare new variable. It will be connection string and we will use new npg SQL connection string builder. If you're using Pamela, uh, Pamela entity framework core or uh, MS SQL entity framework core, you could just use simple string to like build the connection. No worries. It's like almost uh, the same with every other connection. So here we need to provide the details of our connection. So we are using host localhost next port 5432 next username uh, course admin in my case at least next passwords mm, admin course database course db and also here we will provide two optional settings first of all is convert infinity date time to avoid some errors and second one include error details to be easier to debug our application. And now we need to provide these credentials to our options builder. Use npgsql connection string dot uh, connection string. Okay, next we need to provide some optional stuff, but uh, I really recommend you to use it. So log to, first of all, we will get the string and we will debug right line string also we need to provide the settings of this log to so we will use debug to every command executed and so the last one is enable sensitive data logging so log two will uh, write to our debug manager not debug manager but debug window every command that was executed with entity framework it will really really help us to like to know what uh, what's going wrong with our database if something will happen and also enable sensitive data logging it means that we will not see any sensitive data in uh, terminal in errors in uh, connections i mean in comments uh, that will appear in debug window because uh, it's not really good to see like someone's uh, data so yeah let's create the new model we'll just test our connection and migrations so what we need to do we'll create the new class for example whitelist user and it will contain public int id get set and public string name here we'll provide the constructor public whitelist user that will accept string name name equals to name also we need to provide uh, like empty constructor for our entity framework core so yeah okay we have model now that we will use for example if you want to check is user whitelisted or not also we need to create configuration file for this model whitelist user configuration in model configurations folder and inherit it from i entity type configuration interface here we need to provide uh, the type of our um, of the type of the model. Here we need to provide the model, so it's whitelist user, and implement the missing members, so it's public void configure. So here we will just set that builder ASCII XID. So as I said before, this lesson is not uh, about entity framework at all but uh, it's more about how to configure it in regmp so if you want to understand everything what's going on just visit these two websites that i mentioned in, the, in at the start of the video it will really help you and help me to save some time <laughs> so okay we are going to on, on model con creating method that we overriding in course context here we need to just apply our model so model builder apply configuration and creating new whitelist user configuration okay and also to like access our whitelist users we will create new uh, public db set of whitelist user whitelist users 
it's db this is dbset and we will access it to retrieve the information or pass the information about whitelist users okay now we have everything configured what's next we still don't have anything in our database so let's go to the terminal here is uh, a little bit comments from previous uh, lesson i mean uh, in russian so yeah no worries so um, like this so first of all what we need to do we are going to our project folder not here but uh, course rage server files .NET resources server site and we need to copy this path uh, i mean copy the path to the csproj file so here we are copying the, the path and using cd and path so now we are in resources server side folder and here we need to create new migration so if you will use visual studio uh, there is easier way how to like manage the migrations and database updated, updates but uh, here i'm using rider so yeah, i will try to work in terminal and i suggest you to like not be linked to some te technologies and just use terminal in any case use uh, terminal and it will be fine so what what comments are we using here so we are using dotnet af migrations at initial database uh, initial models migration so it's optional name it could be like you could set it how you want and now we need to update our database dotnet af database update yep okay now we can refresh our database going to public and we see that there's a two tables uh, af migrations history and whitelist users okay so it's working fine now let's test uh in the real case i mean so we will use server event uh event resource start public async void on resource starts so what are you gonna do here uh first of all in the first time let's try to create like two new whitelisted users and then in the second try we will try to retrieve the information about them so we will create two strings not two strings but two whitelist um, user one equals new whitelist user here we will provide name for example nipuzi and var user two new whitelist user pesok okay so now we will use our db in using directory in using directive because uh, it's unmanaged code it's connections for you new course context okay now if we will try to look at db we will see that we have db uh, whitelist users here it's db set and we can access it and just add our users add one db whitelist users add user two okay now we just need to save the changes in our database okay let's try to launch it but before it we will build the solution no worries about this stuff but it's built it okay we are going to uh, .NET folder resources server site bin debug netcorrupt 3.1 and here we see a lot of files and we just need to copy them all and uh, like uh, disable the choosing of not dll files so pdb files json files we don't need them devjson and xml and also we don't need our dll file i mean main one the server side dll okay we are copying these files and going to runtime fo folder and just passing passing it here okay now we can run the server okay as you can see server is started we have hello world server and now we can try to look at our database and see what we have here so we're going to whitelist users and you see two users here mipus and pisok okay we passed some information and saved the database now let's try just to retrieve some information and for example like make something okay we will have var name one equals to mipus and var name two equals to Andre. 
Okay, let's try to look, do we have these names in our whitelist? For example, someone trying to register with these nicknames and do we have them or not? Okay, so var result one equals two. DB whitelist users and here we will use link and uh, method any. Do we have any whitelist user with name equals to name one? And uh, var result two is Almost the same, any, but uh, do we have any whitelist users equals to name two? As you can remember, we have Mipo member, but don't have entry member, as you can see here. Okay, now let's just uh, type in console our uh, our results. Okay, let's start the server. Okay, as you can see, Mipus is whitelisted, is true, and Andre is whitelisted, is false. So, yep, it's working fine. That's all. All right, today we mentioned some information, some links, and some other usable stuff about Entity Framework. Don't, uh, be, don't be lazy, try to learn something about it, because into the next lesson we will make uh, like the player model, and we will also make authorization and registration service. Also, I'm not sure about CF part, I mean, like the visual for registration. And uh, if you want to see how I will make uh, like authorization page and other stuff like fields, forms uh, in view, I mean, make the video about it. Just type in uh, comments, type me in DM. Don't forget to type it in our Discord. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our, our uh, channel don't forget to press your like because it will really help us to be better and to make our videos uh, every week i hope every week so yeah thank you for watching and see you into the next lesson goodbye